So this is Jay Hughes with Press On, and I am really excited to have as my guest today, Sean Browning. Sean is the Vice President of Retail Lending for Sierra Pacific and has over 25 years of mortgage lending experience uh, with specific expertise in sales growth and leadership development. Uh, Sean's day-to-day -day responsibilities include driving retail production and branch expansion for Sierra Pacific, as well as helping them form strategic relationships to enhance the company's growth. And uh, Sean's no stranger to street origination. He was a, a top 10 originator with GMAC Mortgage from 90, or from, excuse me, from 1988 through 98, and uh, personally originated and funded nearly uh, 500 million uh, as a loan officer. And then since then, uh, from 2002, he's led production teams that have funded in excess of 60 billion. Uh, Sean is a graduate of, the graduate of the University of Southern California, where he played for the water polo team there. He lives in Temecula, California, with his wife of 25 years. He's got a 17-year-old daughter, a 19-year-old son who's at, at uh, TCU. And when uh, Sean's not working uh, on growing his retail operation, he's helping his wife and daughter out. And Sean, it's, it sounds like you've got, uh, you said you've got four horses uh, excuse me, three horses, four cats, three dogs, 25 chickens. Dude, I don't know how you have time. You said you, you're also competing in over 50 triathlons. You're doing uh, Spartan races. You are a very busy guy, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to be with me today. Oh, glad to be here, Jay. Yeah. Well, um, let's go ahead and get rolling. I'd, I'd love to, to have you maybe take a, a minute or two and just – We'll just kind of open uh, our discussion with your thoughts on kind of the, the current state of the lending environment that we're in. So I'd like to know from you, like, you know, what are your thoughts on 2014 production, how things are shaping up so far, and kind of your predictions for the spring and summer uh, that's coming up? Uh, well, I think the first few months uh, were predicted by the MDA and uh, the precautionators uh, from the perspective of production being what it is. I think the NBA is projecting a little over a trillion dollars in total production off uh, from about 1.7, 1.8 trillion last year. And uh, I think we're all aware of uh, January and February for the most part as an industry were pretty challenging, uh, clearly with the polar vortex hitting uh, a large portion of the geographic area of which we cover. Uh, that wasn't helpful, but we're seeing improvement uh, in the month of March originations have uh, picked up considerably, and uh, we're looking for a pretty strong uh, spring season. Um, as it relates to uh, the home sales, recent home sales have uh, been published, and that's not that encouraging, but the new home front market uh, has some pockets of improvement, and we've seen considerable sales price increases over the last 12 to 24 months. But um, that being said, I am encouraged. I, I think we have the opportunity to differentiate ourselves as an industry. The professionals of which you coach and hopefully will listen to this uh, are the ones that are investing in themselves and truly showing uh, our audience, being realtors, referral partners, uh, that we are a professional organization focused on providing solutions. So uh, it's been a challenging first couple months. Uh, 2013 was strong. Uh, 2012 was historic. Um, and the reality is, uh, 2014 and 2015 and beyond to be strong as well. Yeah. So uh, I'd love to, l let's let's touch on that maybe a little bit further. You know, I know you spend time every single day with, with originators. You know, you're supporting your Sierra Pacific team. Uh, you're recruiting other top producers. And, and so there's folks right now, of course, like you said, January and February are tough. Um, but but there are folks that are doing you know really well right now. There's also loan officers though that are struggling to kind of find their way in this post refi market. I mean, 2012 and and previous we had a a, a lot of refinance activity. A lot of folks that were spending their time um, in that market. What what are you finding are that for the top producers that you're mentoring that you're recruiting? Where are they focusing their time and attention right now? Uh, well, they're focusing their time and attention, which, you know, not to be hindsight or, or being uh, somewhat humorous, but they're focusing exactly what they should be focusing on for the last 10 years, despite the refinance opportunities. I say that because um, refinances come and go. 
it seems like about every two years to three years, maybe every five years in certain cycles, going back to about 1991, uh, they originate. But what I'm coaching, encouraging, challenging my team and, and my friends and colleagues that aren't on my team is to focus and continue to focus on building uh, and expanding their referral relationships, uh, their referral partners, which are not only realtors, but they may be past clients. So the opportunities to pursue uh, previous database management from a, a refinance opportunity, many of those individuals have a wide sphere of influence. So every single contact that we've currently done or had in the past or currently uh, is a potential referral partner for the future. Um, one thing that I see uh, with the, the folks that are being successful, and clearly you, you said that, there are a lot of people and a lot of professionals in the loan officer ranks that continue to persevere and are focused on doing what they have, and that's adding value. Uh, they're looking to add value by differentiating themselves. They're uh, looking to add value and solutions to their referral partners. And um, I can't underestimate, although some of my brethren uh, may disagree with me on this, it really takes perseverance and hard work. Um, Amen. And it come, um, uh, as I think for our, our relationship for knowing each other for many years, Jay, uh, I pride myself on working very, very hard. And it may be because I'm not smart enough to figure out other solutions, but the folks that I see, the loan officers that uh, I, I know that are successful, they're dedicated, they're professional, and they work really, really, really hard. Mm. Um, so um, I don't have any magic blue pill or purple pill or green pill, whatever your whatever your uh, fancy is. But uh, uh, there has to be focus. And uh, I think you had asked me earlier uh, in preparation of this call about some focus, and I'll I'll give more insight on uh, down the road. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. I mean, uh, there is no there is no magic pill. There's no there's no trick. It is. Um, as you described, it's hard work and perseverance, and it's and it's in those disciplines that uh, that we know um, uh, we've got to we've got to pay attention to. That's easy to uh, lose focus on. That's you know focus on, on past clients, uh, referral partners, uh, realtors, and builders. But it's it's making uh, proactive efforts, and and those activities do you know fall to the wayside as you were describing. Uh, with with uh, originators that spent a lot of time taking orders and working on refinances, so it sounds like, uh, and this is nothing new, but again, it's just it's a it's a crucial reminder. Uh, people have got to get out out from behind the desk, get out in the field, and, and work really really hard to cultivate relationships. Uh, you said something a few moments ago, and I and I want to emphasize this, and that's being proactive. Um, clearly. We're going to create our own opportunities. The, the, the phone is not ringing. Um, uh, it's been said, and, and I've heard different uh, stats, whether it be from the National Mortgage Bankers Association, Fannie, Freddie, or even NAR, that um, there, there could be a considerable attrition in our ranks. Attrition means from a loan originator's perspective, from an industry perspective, and even a company perspective. We're already starting to see that, and I've seen – uh, guesstimates, estimates, or uh, uh, other types of uh, commentary that our industry could shrink between 30 and 50 percent over the next 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. The large, I think we're all aware of, have already started doing that because the vast majority of those originators, processes, and support team, very unfortunately, were focusing on adding value to a need at the time, and that is refinancing and uh, helping homeowners reduce their debt, consolidate their debt, and others. That was very, very, very important. Unfortunately, when the vast majority of our uh, industry and potential customers have refinanced uh, to as low as three and a quarter, uh, four and a quarter, when we're in the four and a half to four and three quarter range or somewhere in between, uh, there's not a lot of uh, added value in refinancing unless there's equity for cash out or consolidation purposes. So uh, just to emphasize what you said, being proactive and, and creating your own opportunity, uh, I cannot uh, you know, underestimate the importance of that. Yeah, no question, no question about it. I mean, there's just, <laughs> uh, 
<clears throat> we talk about this all the time with rates as you know w having gone to those historic lows. There's just not going to be refis. I mean, we're going to have to see rates go to you know maybe six, seven percent, and then another drop before you're going to really see any kind of a refi cycle. Um, this is such a unique. Uh, rate environment that we've been through and so it, it has to be a focus on pro proactivity like you described. Um, that's a great segue kind of the net the next question I was going to ask you uh, was kind of your thoughts on the mental aspect of originating um, you know it, it is a tough environment and you're talking about you know the potential for us to go through a cycle with uh, attrition in the ranks losing loan officers we we definitely had a cleansing back you know, we'll remember back to, you know, uh, 2009, 2010, especially we had, uh, we had, uh, we lost a lot of loan officers due to uh, what, what happened in the market. And, and then a lot, those that were able to hang on, were able to hang on with refis. And so now we're going, through, you know, with, with refis um, uh, leaving us, we are going to go through another cleansing. That is a, it's a tough, this is a tough business. Um, what are your thoughts on um, maintaining a positive outlook in this business? I mean, how do you, how would you coach somebody? How would you consult somebody? How do you, maybe you mentally prepare to get up and go to war every morning and stay positive in this environment? Uh, that's a uh, tough question. <laughs> There's no <laughs> reason for that one. But uh, that being said, you know, what we do is very, very tough. Um, it's very rewarding, and what is our motivation to be in this industry? Clearly, there was a cleansing in you know 06, 07 uh, specifically, and um, I hate to use it in that because every single one of those individuals that I made reference a few moments ago are you know are our friends, are our neighbors, and are just trying to live the American dream in their own area. But to answer your question, you know the mental aspect of our business is extraordinarily challenging. It's emotionally draining, and you really have to love what you do, and you need to understand that dealing with rejection uh, is part of our business. I recently saw a video uh, by Steve Jobs, and Steve Jobs uh, was referencing the IT business. They were talking about the software, hardware business, but what he said is uh, you need to be you know, somewhat insane to be in this business. Mm. And uh, uh, in looking at that, I was putting a parallel to our business. You have to be somewhat insane to be in our business because it's extraordinarily uh, competitive uh, uh, from an origination perspective, notwithstanding recent NMLS licensing requirements and previous state licensing. There hasn't been a significant barriers to injury to be part of our industry. Clearly, we saw that back in 02 through 05, 06 when so many people entered it uh, that didn't really have the same benevolent background or, or, or um, values that I think many of us that are still in this business uh, had, and that should be an honorable profession, helping people achieve the American dream. Um, but that being said, you really have to love what you do, you have to love people, uh, and you have to be a solution provider. Uh, we're not a commodity, although you know we may be viewed by others as a commodity. Uh, clearly there's an audience out there that's looking for the best price, the best rate, uh, and the fastest service, but I think we could all agree on you're not going to always get those three components together. You could usually have one or two of those, but clearly not three in most instances. So what are you really focusing on? Right. Um, and then lastly, you know, you have to be an optimist. Um, I, I believe each and every day that I'm going to achieve whatever that may be based upon my goal set based upon getting up early in the morning and working out to fuel my, my body for the day. Um, or, you know, if I faced 25 rejections uh, over the previous 8, 9, 10 hours of, of making sales calls, you know, what am I going to be able to achieve tomorrow? And um, I'm not going to achieve anything unless I get in my car and or uh, set up appointments so I can at least create that opportunity. And by creating the opportunity, it's going to create other opportunities to at least build a relationship one step at a time. Mm, well said. Well said. I love that. And um, and you and I definitely qualify based on your definition. We are both we are both insane, and so that's that probably is. <laughs> We uh, we meet we meet your qualification. We've been in this in a while, and and uh, and I think that's true, though. I mean, you you do have to. You, it's it's a work ethic. You got to be a little bit crazy to be in it, 
Uh, but, but when you've got that optimistic attitude, um, you have to get, in fact, I was just coaching somebody earlier today. We were talking about this concept of just getting comfortable with failing a little bit. It, that's not easy. And it's not easy to be, have somebody tell you, no, I don't, I don't want to work with you. I don't, you know, I don't want you to handle my loan or whatever the transaction is. And, and, and you've got to get comfortable with that and know that there is opportunity right around the corner. So again, really well said. Thank you. Um, I did want to ask you, you, I know you work and have worked with a lot of leaders over the years, um, developing uh, leaders and, and kind of um, speaking into their life, uh, a lot of the lessons you've learned as, as a leader and manager over the years. <clears throat> one of the challenges, uh, and there are many, but one of the challenges that, that managers often have is they're, they're trying to do two things. Uh, well, they're trying to do a hundred things, but two main categories are they're trying to run their branch and inspire their people and help the originators in their own branch get out and, and originate and, and be productive and fruitful. And that in and of itself, that's a tough task. Um, at the same time, there's many managers that are also trying to produce and keep their eye on that ball. So maybe if, if you could take a moment and just share what have you found to be uh, some of the best practices and habits of managers that do that well, that are both able to kind of motivate and assist their team, but also balance their time well um, to keep their personal production moving. Um, you're absolutely right. I mean, multitasking is multi-failing in many instances, so uh, really compartmentalizing your focus. Uh, the things that I see for those successful, I, I think what your question is is, not only producing branch managers uh, and leaders, but folks that are not only uh, focusing on their own production, but also uh, supporting other originators within their their office or sphere of influence. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. How? When, what have you seen? Uh, how, maybe the again the the habits and disciplines of folks that do that well, that are that manage well, but also drive their own production well. And I think you've kind of answered a little bit. I mean, compartmentalizing and having a focus. Um, on one thing at a time? Well, um, uh, clearly, I, I think the folks that are successful in, in our business and others uh, truly have to be committed. Uh, they have to be driven. Uh, they have to be persistent. Um, and as you referenced a few moments ago, I'll, I'll call it as a, you know, uh, as you're multitasking or multi-failing, as I referenced, uh, we need to be in the moment. Um, and when I say being in the moment, you know, what is it? that's motivating you at that particular time, and what are you focusing on? Mm -hmm. And this is a constant challenge for all of us, me included. Mm -hmm. um, we have information overload. Uh, we have our, our mobile devices. We have our iPads. We have our computers. Uh, on any given moment, I'll, I'll have three of them buzz simultaneously from the same person, uh, which is uh, challenging uh, from that respect. But um, you know, the best thing I could say uh, when I'm wearing my leader hat I'm leading. Uh, when I'm wearing my supporting hat uh, and or supporting uh, my team, I am leading and or supporting them. Um, uh, recently, uh, actually in the last several months, uh, a book was written uh, by Gary Keller from Keller Williams Realty. It's called The One Thing. Yeah, The One uh, Thing. The surprisingly and simple truth behind extraordinary results and about how he and his team grew Keller Williams Realty. Uh, and one of the things that he talks about, and I'll give him the credit because I've been, uh, uh, you know, employed this in, in my daily regime, is really focusing on the task at hand, prioritizing on what's important and what's most important at that time, um, and then in addition to that, uh, uh, focusing on providing results. We all have too much to do. Uh, I, I had a recent conversation with. Uh, one of my mentors, and he would indicate, Sean, every day there's a, uh, there's a lot of stuff on my desk and some of it falls off. But make sure the important stuff doesn't fall off. And what he meant by that, which I really appreciate each him sharing with me, is I don't get everything accomplished each and every day, and I don't think any of us do. But we need to prioritize what the important things are and get those accomplished. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when uh, you know, I think the second part of your question was, you know, that was more of a leadership component and supporting. But, you know, when I'm focusing on or when I did and what I'm 
encouraging our, our producing branch managers focus on personal production. They're focusing on their client. Um, you know, I'm not answering phone calls if I'm in a meeting. Uh, I understand the importance of that, and I understand the sense of urgency. But when I speak with a client, I don't want to be. I don't want them to be interrupted uh, when I'm speaking with them. And when they call me, I would let them know. It says I will get back to you expeditiously as soon as I'm done. Uh, but I don't want to disrespect the person that I'm in uh, concert with, or, or in consultation with, or in the middle of a loan application. So it's really building trust over time in a consistent uh, fashion. And uh, consistency is something that I'm sure many of your clients and folks that I've seen in the industry, they're consistent during the good times as well as the challenging times. It's not the peaks and valleys regardless of what the interest rate environment is. Yeah, absolutely. So great, great point. Um, you know, it. You're describing, um, and I'm sure you've heard this before. This is not, you know, certainly is not my my phrasing um, of being present, right? Like just being in the moment. So if I'm focusing on origination, that's what that's that's the one thing in that moment that I'm on. When it's time to manage my team, that's what I'm focused on. If I'm at working on motivating and inspiring a group of loan officers, that's the focus. And that takes. I mean, it's tough. I mean, it's very easy to say because, as you said, there's so many temptations for distractions. Um, with technology and so you know a line of people maybe coming out, out you know standing in front of your door waiting to talk to you so it is tough uh, but I think that that is a it's a tremendous point great insight um, I'd love to hear maybe you talk for a moment um, maybe we'll talk about a couple of you know uh, common objections that uh, that a loan officer might experience I mean for one for sure you you'll have uh, uh, loan officers, maybe they're talking to a real estate agent, and uh, this, is a, this is a prospecting call. They're talking to a new agent and um, kind of at, maybe performing a, a little mini high trust interview, trying to get them to know them a little bit. And uh, the objection from the agent is, look, I've already got an existing relationship. I'm already working with another lender. And so how are you coaching and kind of consulting your your folks through that objection right now? And maybe even how did you... Uh, work through that objection back when you were originating? Um, persistence. <laughs> yeah. Back to your previous point. Uh, most realtors, whether they be selling agents, listing agents, or even on the builder side, they're probably working with somebody before they're working with you or I or someone else that, that uh, we're trying to create a relationship with. Uh, you talked about you know high trust interviews, etc. It's not created in a one-stop shop. And quite candidly, the vast majority of us, and I say us looking in the mirror, uh, don't create a consistent pattern over an extensive period of time to show our commitment to their success. Mm. So relationships are not created uh, in a one-stop shop. They're developed over weeks, months, and many times years. But they can never have a foundation or a cornerstone to build upon if we don't have a consistent uh, uh, area. Uh, you would ask uh, you know, what I did. I had my milk route. Uh, people laugh at me because they don't know what that is, but I'm old enough and some of the audience may be, is I had a consistent milk route that I would do six days a week. And I say six days a week. I did it for about seven, eight years, six days a week. And, and my realtors, my builders, my agents, my referral partners could come to count that on that sometime between 1 and 4 on Tuesday, that Sean guy uh, wearing a coat and tie, uh, or sometimes at least a tie, but not a coat <laughs> if it's 100 degrees out. Uh, I don't want to embarrass myself in some of the markets. But where I uh, ended up moving from and to, um, I want to differentiate myself. And when I'm 25 years old trying to compete against 35 or 45 or 50-year-old professionals, the only thing I have to do um, is show up in many instances. Um, I, I joke to myself and, and I encourage others, sometimes you have to be at the right time at the right place. Uh, that's not very sexy, it's not very uh, engaging, but it's the reality of uh, creating value. Uh, and what I've seen, uh, whether it be uh, uh, creating your own opportunity that we talked about previously about being proactive, if you're not in the right place at the right time, you'll never have the opportunity because the reality is someone going to say, 
boy, I have a loan opportunity. I need someone to be pre-called. I need financing. I'm going to call that Sean Browning guy. Uh, the, the reality of that happens close to zero. Yep. Agreed. So, 100%. Uh, yeah. Agree. 100%. I think you knocked that out of the park. Um, you know, you've, it, it takes, <clears throat> well, we even touched on this earlier in the interview. Um, you, you have to be, uh, you have to have re realistic expectations, right? Stepping into that interview, as you said, they're not going to just say, oh my gosh, like, here's a mortgage loan officer talking to me and he, he wants my business. Well, you can have it all. Like, it, just, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen like that. It takes uh, days, months, weeks, years of follow-up. And uh, I don't know about you. I, 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 I mean, I, I tend to see people both have call reluctance because they're afraid that they're going to get rejected in that first meeting and so they don't even try, or uh, they maybe give it one or two attempts, and then they just give up. And um, and so I, I, you know, I love the exhortation of again persistence. You've got to uh, really, really follow up with these folks, right? Uh, you have to be consistent. You have to be professional, and, and know that the vast majority of us, and I say us, looking in the mirror, just so you and uh, understand my point that 95 plus percent of us looking in the mirror again don't create this consistent method. And, and over time I think and I believe and I've seen it happen time and time and time again, the partners that we're looking to associate ourselves are looking to associate, associate themselves with professionals, the people that are committed, the people are going to show up, uh, and people are going to be truthful and honest with them. Uh, that's clearly something that uh, we all need to uh, uh, be cognizant of and, and be able to stand behind what our personal or company value proposition are. Uh, in regard to you know differentiating yourself, many times back in the you know the 80s, 90s when I was doing 25 to maybe 35 or 40 transactions a month, um, it was really just creating relationships one at a time, figuring out what their needs are trying to figure out if I had the ability or my company in concert with myself had the ability to fill those needs. Uh, I think many of us uh, have a, a tendency to think that we could figure out and be all things to all people. And if one thing I could share with uh, you know, my loan officers and other loan officers is we can't be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. uh, be most things to most people. And if a referral partner or a a uh, realtor has a lot of business to give, but it's all very, very difficult and challenging business. Um, I sometimes say unpopular things to my loan officers, uh, and I'll say it to you right now, is I would want, rather have them refer that business to other loan officers and let those transactions as valuable and rewarding and uh, monetarily rewarding as it may be, clog up somebody else's pipeline so I could go back and create a streamlined process, add value, and uh, uh, close more loans for, for them, for myself, my company, and we all uh, enjoy the successes together. Mm. Uh, there's a need uh, and a desire uh, to be all things to all people, but I don't know of an example that I've come across in my 25 plus years where those originators uh, that want to be all things to all people are successful. Yeah, no question. Uh, thank you for that, Sean. Great, great insights. Um, another objection that comes up, uh, and I know you hear this, you've heard this, I'm sure your whole career as well, but it is pricing, right? And so I, I'd love to have you maybe share uh, your thoughts on ways to work through pricing objections. Uh, maybe that's, maybe we'll stick with, with a real estate agent. Maybe the realtor says, hey, I've kind of uh, you know, the last few deals I, I tried to send you, your rates were too high, or maybe I checked out your rates uh, with a different branch and they seem high. Whatever the case may be, there's this perception that that uh, rate with you and the company is just too high. Um, and and so, how do you, you know, how do you coach your LOs uh, through that type of objection? Maybe it's like you said earlier, uh, you can't be all things to all people, so that could be part of it. But if there's any other thoughts you have on that area, I'd love to hear, uh, other than just having people say, oh, you know, run to you or run to secondary marketing and asking for a pricing exception. Well, I, uh, I think uh, we would all agree that pricing is important. Uh, 
but it's not the only thing. And quite candidly, I don't even know if it's the top three, four, or five uh, on my list of deliverables uh, in regard to differentiating myself, my company, uh, or others. That being said, I understand and agree, acknowledge that pricing is important. You need to be competitive. You need to be in the hunt. Uh, but more importantly, what I coach and, and what I strive for is uh, delivering a world-class experience uh, and service to not only my, my borrowers, our customers, but the referral agent. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's different elements that, that make that up. Um, you know, the majority of realtors, at least the ones that I've come in contact with, and that's probably hundreds in my career, quite generally, they're, they're, they want to make sure that their client is taken care of. They want to have that experience of which you're being proactive, you're communicating, uh, you're providing solutions to the challenges, you're communicating with me, i.e. me being the realtor, or you're communicating with our transaction coordinator, the uh, title company, the settlement agents, the attorneys, uh, the escrow companies, depending on what state you may be in. Uh, so really, it, it's delivering an overall experience that is still competitive. Uh, I, I don't want to be coy, but uh, if, if price is the only thing, then we all are aware that there's other outlets available on the Internet. But what we do, and, and I, value exactly, uh, I value tremendously the profession of which I, I fell into, you know, in 1984 uh, and then again full-time in 88, um, is we provide a great service to the most important aspect of somebody's life, mm. purchasing and undertaking the most important financial decision in the world. Um, if price was the only thing, you know, uh, you know, retailers and companies such as Tiffany, Nordstrom, Nino Marcus wouldn't exist, and they all seem to be flourishing pretty well even in, in challenging economic times. Uh, but if somebody says that the only thing that's important is price, then I would most likely say I understand the importance of that, uh, but it's not the only thing you're looking for. Is uh, communication important? Is providing solutions important? Is closing on time important? Uh, is working with uh, the vendors and the partners associated with the most important transaction of your life important? Uh, there's an element within our industry that clearly over the last decade plus uh, has become extraordinarily uh, price sensitive. Uh, the new generation millennials, uh, which are more uh, adept and uh, are, are working through the Internet uh, and through mobile, uh, are very, very much looking to have interaction on those applications and platforms as well. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, being an old school kind of guy, it's all about relationship, it's all about adding value, it's being proactive and not hiding underneath uh, the rock when a challenge uh, uh, is created. Uh, I've said it time and time again, I think on this call, but over my career is we're paid to provide solutions when challenges arise. Um, I, I don't want to be dealing with somebody that I can't get a hold of that's going to provide that solution mm. when challenges occur uh, in a real estate transaction. That's it. I mean, and that's so true. I mean, when you're a street originator, when you're a manager, that that is um, that's how we earn our living. It is it is rising to the occasion when a challenge is uh, is before us, and and walking the borrower through that, walking the real estate agent through it, and um, and there is a place for that. There's a there is a huge percentage of of transactions that are being closed in this space, and there of course there's always going to be a place maybe for for uh, the lowest possible rate, um, but they're not going to get the service. As you mentioned before, you're not. You, it's very tough to get all three, and so uh, great answer. Anyway, I, I love that. We could spend, I'm sure, even more time on that. Uh, before we close, a couple couple last questions. Sean, I know you are, I know you personally, we've, we've known each other for a while, and I know you are very busy. You've always been really busy. You manage a, uh, a full calendar um, you you've got a lot of people that you're that you are uh, both coaching and training and recruiting. You travel. You've got a family. Uh, you mentioned you, you're working out. Maybe talk for a minute about some of your mindset um, and and best practices as it relates to time management. What do you do to kind of keep your schedule together? Um. Rewinding a second, it, it, it's challenging. Don't get me wrong. Uh, travel is the most challenging, being away from my wife and daughter and, and being in contact with them. Uh, but that being said, 
uh, being in the moment, being in the present that you made reference a few moments ago. Mm. You know, what's important now? I think that might be the most important component because, um, as I made reference, one of my mentors just recently shared with me that, hey, things fall off my desk every day. It's my job to differentiate what's important and make sure the important items don't fall off. And the analogy to that was, you know, we all have too many things on our plate. Well, we want to be proactive. Well, we want to be responsive. What's most important at that moment in time? I, I think it's critically, critically, critically important. Uh, secondly, which is kind of dovetailing on what I just said, is prioritizing. Uh, and for, for years, and I, I learned this through the old Franklin Planning uh, Group, and then subsequently came to become the Franklin Covey Group, is really prioritizing and planning your day uh, to deal with it. Uh, each and every day, I'm going to tell you right now, I fail. Uh, but I get up uh, uh, eternally optimist each and every moment and each and every day that I'm going to be successful on that day. And, and if I could achieve you know, seven to ten of the important components uh, of the 20 items, not to withstanding that they are all important, but what's most important at that moment in time. Uh, and then lastly, um, uh, I've met a lot of folks uh, who have high desire, uh, uh, they want to be successful, they have a willingness to be successful, but as you alluded to earlier, you know, what actions are they doing to support their willingness and their wantingness? Um, uh, again, I, I will quote uh, uh, Gary Keller in a book, uh, the, the one thing that he, he, he talks about, and I recently reread it, by the way, and that's why I'm referencing it twice right now. He talks about people that have big thinking, uh, big aspirations, uh, but there's a real disconnect on uh, the successful folks are taking actions to further that big thinking and aspirations versus others that are either making excuses, coming up with their own objections, creating obstacles that they can't overcome, or they're not focusing on the important aspects of which we've uh, alluded to and discussed previously. Uh, it's the difference between you know uh, creating big outcomes and successful, sustainable, long-term careers, or, or having small outcomes, or being successful in the peaks of our industry, but not being able to see on that from a sustainable, consistent perspective in the future. Mm. Uh, you talked something, uh, I think, earlier, and it's a challenge for all of us, uh, me included. You know, procrastination is the death of our profession. Procrastination is the death of, uh, of many aspects, and if you interviewed my wife, she'd probably uh, underscore everything I'm talking about because uh, I'm guilty of this as well. When I have my honeydew list come Saturday morning, the way I look at it, uh, if I can't see, I uh, get my honeydew list by, uh, done by 1 or 2 o'clock, God knows I'm not going to be able to watch my sporting events or, or do what <laughs> I do or, or spend more time with my daughter and my wife and, and clearly during football season, watch football on Sunday. So, um, you know, uh, procrastination is challenging. Uh, I think for many of us, all of us, me included, but uh, we need to just overcome it uh, moment by moment and, and persevere through it. Yeah, and I think I think even the three steps that you outlined there, I mean, just being present, uh, taking the time to prioritize and plan out your day, the actions that are most important, and then uh, the third uh, component you mentioned was just taking action, just taking action. Those three together... I have found, both in my life personally, because this is something I struggle with and with the folks that I coach, those three things defeat procrastination every time. And so it is a, it is a mindset, it's a habit uh, it, that, that you've got to cultivate and, and, and create that um, over time into a discipline, but I think you nailed it. Um, we're going to wrap here in just a moment, but I wanted to see, is there anything else maybe, Sean, that, uh, that you wanted to share that I missed so far today? Uh, probably just you know summarizing you know, in regard to the team and what you're doing uh, through press on is, is really uh, find individuals and become an individual that you know are you extremely driven and you have a high desire to succeed. Uh, we touched upon that a little bit before because it, it really comes down to uh, what you just said. You know, are are your actions supporting that drive and desire? So in, in essence, one, you know, are, do you have the drive? and the desire to succeed, which most people will say they do, but unfortunately their actions supporting that drive 
and desire are not consistent with what they're trying to do. And then, then lastly, and I touched upon this earlier, what we do is very difficult, very challenging, uh, and, and very discouraging sometimes, you know. Uh, I, I encourage you, uh, be optimistic, be resilient, uh, uh, have, a, have a, a group of supporting uh, professionals uh, through not only, you know, B&I type groups or, or sales support or, or even through the church or, or other avenues in which you do, but have accountability groups because the reality is when I look in the mirror, I may think that I'm doing everything I need to do, but unless I have a high trust relationship with somebody that uh, has a ability of, to share with their observations and, and call BS on Sean, um, uh, that's very, very powerful. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Jay, the one thing that I could really encourage not only uh, the audience, but also each and every one of the folks that I lead is, you know, we should have a personal, personal, personal challenge to raise the bar uh, for our industry and our profession. Um, what I do, what you do, what we do collectively is very honorable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I want to get back to what it was when I joined the business. Uh, clearly, the financial meltdown and a lot of other things that have occurred over the last decade uh, have created a, a different mindset within the public, within government, uh, and what it is. But I have to tell you, I know what you do. I know what I do is honorable. I know what uh, the vast majority of our industry does do that. And I think personally, we need to all carry the flag to uh, raise the bar in our professionalism, uh, differentiate what we do is of high value, um, and, and make sure that when I tell people that I'm a loan officer or I'm a mortgage loan originator, uh, there's respect, because uh, I feel that way about everybody that I work with, everybody I come in con uh, encounter with, uh, and everybody in our industry uh, for the vast majority of those individuals. So mm. uh, don't, ever, don't ever forget that, because I, uh, I certainly don't. Oh my goodness, Sean! What a great way to end, and I, I do. I just want to affirm that, like, uh, it is an honor. It is an honor to do what we do, and to be able to to partner with um, with borrowers and with with real estate agents and and other referral partners to help people uh, purchase uh, a home and get into uh, a place that uh, they can feel secure in, that they enjoy, that they're going to live life with their family. Like that is it is an honorable profession. And uh, I, I I just appreciate you so much bringing that up and and um, and we do I think as a to a person uh, those that that are listening like let's let's do that let's focus on that this week let's raise the bar and and be excited uh, about the honor that we have to to um, to move this industry forward I love it so Sean thank you so much I, I appreciate you this has been a tremendous interview uh, like I've said a couple times I know you're very busy for you to take. An hour and spend that with me. It, it means a lot to me, and I know those that will listen to this will get a ton of value out of it. So, thank you again so much for being on today. That's been a pleasure, Jay. Thank you, and uh, I, I wish the best of luck to uh, you and uh, your entire audience and, and coaching team. Uh, I know what you're doing uh, is furthering on those principles. So, I congratulate you and thank you for that as well. Mm, thank you again, Sean. So uh, again, thank you guys for listening. This is Jay Hughes with Press On, and I uh, hope you guys have a great week.